Okay, one of my YouTube viewers had asked me about uh, some of the other uh, vertical controls that you'll find on an oscilloscope. Um, we talked about, uh, in a previous video, the AC and DC coupling control, so we won't really cover that. But uh, the question was really more about um, the alt and chop controls and what they are, as well as the add and the invert controls uh, for channel 2, and why would you use those. So we'll take a look at uh, the alt and chop first. Uh, the alt and chop modes, on some scopes it's combined into one button, it's either alt or chop, and whether it's in or out, on this particular scope uh, it's two different buttons. And what that does is it controls how the, the scope display shows what's on channel 1 or what's on channel 2. On this particular scope, when I push channel 2 it releases the channel 1 button, so I'm looking at what's on channel 2. If I push channel 1 it shows on what's on channel 1. On some scopes you can actually push both of those in and then they'll both be displayed in either an alt or chop mode. In this scope, um, if you want to do an alt or chop, you would put that in. And what, what's the difference between these two? Well, alt stands for alternate. And when you push that in, it displays both channels. And what it's doing is alternating between, you know, one sweep it's doing channel one, the next sweep it's doing channel two. And uh, when you're sweeping along pretty quick, I'm doing here, oh, this is 10 microseconds per division you really can't see that because it's occurring so fast you can't tell but if we slow the sweep speed way down now you can kind of see that it's two separate sweeps it's alternating between channel 1, channel 2, channel 1, channel 2 on alternating sweeps back and forth Okay, so the alt mode is useful when you're dealing with sweep speeds that are fairly fast Okay, faster than we can see here we'll start to see kind of the flicker between the two channels when we're down around a few milliseconds per division. That's five milliseconds a division. That's two, that's one. Once you get faster than that, the alt mode works just fine. Okay. Uh, so what's the chop mode for? Let's say we're looking at signals that we're moving very slowly. Okay. And uh, so the chop mode, what it does is rather than going the entire sweep, what it does is it, send, it basically chops back and forth between the channel 1 and channel 2 very quickly, typically at about a 1 megahertz rate, um, so that when you're dealing with these slow sweep speeds, you can see both channels simultaneously um, very easily. Now, why wouldn't I use chop all the time? Well, when you start getting up to uh, you know signals that are starting to wiggle, if you will, or you're going to have sweep speeds that are close to a megahertz or something like that, you might start seeing some artifacts of the chopping mechanism. Um, so that, uh, and, and so you might want to have the alternate position where you can just do a full sweep in either case. So, um, so really most of the time for, for you know, good signals, uh, you know, an alt, the alt works fine. Chop typically if you're looking at really slow sweep speeds or things like that. So that's typically where you'd use those two. So just two different ways of displaying multiple channels on a screen that only has essentially a single trace. Um, because this is not a dual beam oscilloscope. So that was, uh, that's really kind of what that's used for. Now uh, the other question I had was really, you know, what do, why would we use the add input or the invert? Well to do that, let's consider um, say this circuit right here. Okay. So here's a simple little circuit. This is actually what I'm probing on the board here. I'm actually probing the collector and emitter voltages on this little phase splitter, uh, you know, single transistor phase splitter. So I've got a couple of resistors here that are biasing the input to about uh, one third of the supply voltage and uh, so that kind of gives us a bias point here and then uh, th with these two resistors being the same we're going to have about the same gain. This is going to be non-inverting, that's going to be inverting. And we can see that on the screen where these two signals are co complements of each other. So I'm probing you know, channel 1 and channel 2 on the base and collector here. Or excuse me, the collector and emitter here. All right, And I just have a signal generator coupled into the input. So, um, so why would we want to use like the add input or something like that? Well the reason is, is let's say we we're going to go look at this circuit with a voltmeter. Right? I could literally just take a voltmeter and put it across any two nodes. Right? Because the voltmeter is floating. Okay? So, um, so we could probe with a voltmeter you know, at any particular point in the circuit and, and measure voltages, the voltage difference between any two particular points. Uh, the problem is you can't really do that with a scope, right? Because the scope, uh, one input of the ground, one of the input of the probe is ground. So I can't just arbitrarily take a probe and put it across any two points because one point is always at ground. Let me kind of show you that on the circuit here. 
we'll move this, uh, move the camera over here, okay, and slide it down a little bit. And see, there's, uh, let me zoom out a little so we can kind of see everything, okay. So there's my circuit right down here on the board, and there's my voltmeter. So I could take, you know, my probes for the voltmeter and literally put them across anywhere. I'm going to uh, turn, disconnect the, uh, the signal input here for the moment, so we're just looking at the DC point on this uh, on this circuit. So if I kind of put one probe on ground here, I can probe, say, the base voltage here. So about, you can see it's about 1.6 volts, so it's about one-third of the supply voltage of 5 volts here. If I probe the uh, collector voltage right there, I can see that's sitting at about 4 volts. If I probe the emitter voltage, I can see it's about 0.98. Now let's say, for example, I want to see what's the voltage, say, across the collector and emitter, right? So if I want to look at, uh, looking at the circuit here again, let's say, what's the voltage, the collector to emitter voltage? Well, I could just make this voltage measurement and make this voltage measurement and subtract the emitter from the collector, right? So, you know, so I could go in here and say, record this value and say, okay, that's 0.98, okay, about one volt. And I can look at this and I say, oh, let's see, we'll go back to the collector voltage here. That's about four. So I'd have about 3 volts there, because I'd take 4 minus 0.98, okay? But I could just take my meter and probe uh, both those spots, and I can see it's about 3 volts, okay? I can't do that with the scope probes, right? Because the scope probes, you've got this scope lead, and the other end is ground. So if I connected ground, you know, up here to try to make that measurement, you know, that measurement across this device like this, I'd short that point to ground, so I can't do that. So what, we, so what we can do is just employ that little bit of math, like I, I described earlier. I can essentially probe the emitter, and that's one voltage, and I can probe the collector, and there's the other voltage. But how do I take the difference of them? I, I want to take, you know, say, channel 1 minus channel 2. Well, on the scope, we don't have channel 1 minus channel 2. We have channel 1 plus channel 2. If we go back to the scope here, okay and let's zoom in a little bit, you can see it's, it says add right here, right? It doesn't say subtract. So how do I subtract it? Well, that's where the invert comes in, okay? So I can actually invert channel 2. So now when I take, I would be, basically the add input would say take channel 1 plus the inverse of channel 2, or basically channel 1 minus channel 2. So it's really kind of a way of making a, a voltage measurement between two points, okay, uh, without probing across two points. You know, you get into the higher end scopes and things like that and you actually have what's called a differential probe which will allow you to probe any two arbitrary points and measure the voltage difference between them. This is a way of doing that without employing those probes. So for example, if I put my signal back onto this thing, okay, so actually uh, I can actually go do that and I can see there's channel 1 and channel 2. If I take this signal off here, for example, um, and if I uh, invert channel 2, okay, and I put in the add mode. Now, what I'm looking at, for example, if I kind of put both of these uh, channels to ground, I can see that if, when both these signals are connected to ground, so their difference is zero. So I, my trace is right down at the bottom of the screen there. I can just barely see it at the bottom of the screen. But if, so now if I connect, DC connect these signals now, I can actually see at about one volt division, I've got a little bit more than three volts of, uh, uh, of signal there. So I'm actually measuring that differential voltage. Now where this becomes really useful, well, let's go back to kind of the, uh, put my signal back on here, is now I can look at how the, the voltage between the collector and emitter or the difference between these two voltages is changing. And it might be helpful if I start varying the signal level here and start seeing some effects. Like I, if I vary the signal level, I can see I'm clipping at the top here, I'm clipping down at the bottom here. Okay, or I can see these signals kind of crashing into each other here. I'm saturating the transistor. So all of that can be observed very easily now by inverting channel 2 and adding them. And now I'm looking at, this is now the voltage difference between collector and emitter. So I can actually see when I'm going really positive and I'm clipping, or if I keep on going and I start uh, saturating the transistor, I can actually read saturation voltage here of a, a few hundred millivolts or so. Uh, so that's what the what the add and invert does is it basically allows you to probe two different points in a circuit and measure the voltage difference between those two without using a differential probe. Uh, you can do it easily again with a multimeter for DC values, but this is how you can do it for vari uh, signals that are varying versus time or AC signals 
uh, to kind of look at uh, the dynamic voltage difference across any two nodes in a circuit.